Sorry, brother, I, I didn't mean to break the plate. Oh, that's all right. Putting the pieces together kind of reminds me of plate tectonics. Plate tectonics? What? Yeah, plate tectonics. Yeah, if you've got a second, I can tell you something about it. Well, uh, uh, sure. I, I need a break anyway. Thank goodness for these things. Plate tectonics is a theory that revolutionized our understanding of the Earth. The word tectonics comes from the Greek language meaning to build. The theory unified many distinct branches of science that study the Earth. Including our Earth has a solid inner core made up of iron. It is about as hot as the surface of the sun, and it spins faster than the rest of the planet. The lithosphere is a tough and elastic region comprising of the crust and uppermost mantle. The asthenosphere is a soft and plastic-like area ranging from the bottom of the lithosphere to approximately 660 kilometers deep. Earlier, we spoke about the meaning of the word tectonics. But what exactly is a plate as it relates to the Earth? The most basic explanation of a plate is a piece of the crust containing either a continent or ocean. The Earth's surface is built from plates and currently there are 20 plates that we know about. The main plates are African plate, Antarctic plate. The idea that the continents are not in a fixed position is not new. In fact, scientists have been proposing this idea for over 400 years. It wasn't until 1912 when Alfred Wegener developed the idea into a full theory that he called continental drift. Wegener's theory was based on the observation that South America and Africa appeared to fit together almost perfectly, like pieces of a puzzle. By uniting patterns from a range of different sources, Wegener was the first to apply a multi-sided, holistic approach to the theory of continental drift. The problem with Wegener's theory was that he didn't have a mechanism to prove that the continents actually had drifted. When pressed, he could only offer that perhaps the continents had plowed through the oceans and had consequently destroyed the floor. He also raised the possibility of the moon's pull, hypothesizing that the force responsible for our tides is possibly powerful enough to move continents. Of course, both suggestions were met with great skepticism by his contemporaries. Since these plates are so massive and move so slowly, rock at the boundary between the two plates becomes compressed over time. When the pressure becomes too great, the rocks shift violently resulting in an explosive release of energy. <laughs> Another destructive wonder of our planet are volcanoes. These blazing rock pyramids form at subduction boundaries where one plate usually a heavier oceanic plate, which then fractures, thereby allowing magma to seep up from the mantle and bleed through the fractures, forming volcanoes. <laughs> 